On today's episode of What the Heck Did I Just Buy, we really clean up our act. Because as you can see, around this shop, uh, cleaning is a top priority. We went out and bought ourselves a sweeper. This came from the last swap meet. It was an impulse buy. And I gotta say, the uh, retro styling, you know, it just sold me. 20 bucks. Off she went. Came home with this. And then uh, spent the rest of the uh, weekend wondering why I bought it. Now, I have no idea if there's like a, you know, vintage antique sweeper collector society out there. I mean, maybe I got ripped off. Maybe I got a good deal. I don't know. But the thing looked in, you know, nice enough shape that, I mean, I, I don't, I don't even feel bad spending 20 bucks on it. So that's saying something. I mean, you look at the condition of the bag and the cord and, you know, the color's nice. I mean, it's been stored in a, you know, nice heat controlled area. Even the little plastic, uh, you know, skateboard wheels on there are in good shape. Royal Prince too, commercial quality. That's what we want. It's pretty cool. It's not grounded, so I guess we got to be careful. And speaking of being careful, I guess the first order of business is to uh, just plug it in and see if it works. All right, so it's plugged in. Right, it's not hot. Nothing. I guess you get what you pay for. Well, I didn't expect to be a vacuum mechanic this morning, but that's how days go sometimes. This thing is awesome. So old school. That's definitely got to be asbestos on there. Well, it's UL listed. Cleaning machine. It's quite the machine. 400 watts. It's got a spring-loaded uh, rear axle on her. I have no clue what any of those numbers mean. A lot of hair. That's pretty cool. You can replace the, uh, you know, the main cord there if it's all screwed up pretty easily. I mean, even if this thing's not working right, hopefully the motor's simple enough and uh, accessible enough to get in there and repair it, get it working again. And if I've learned anything from Ave, it's that you just first start, you know, poking around at things with a screwdriver. So we're trying to just turn the motor over, and it turns over freely. Um, next step, I guess, is tear it apart and then break things, but uh, we're going to hold off on that for the moment. You know, I did buy these screwdrivers because of watching that guy. They have been pretty nice, though. Well, this could get interesting. We're going to plug it directly into the motor here from this cord, since it looks like the, uh, the main cord runs probably runs through that switch. And that's what turns the motor on and off. There goes nothing. Oh yeah, <clears throat> a little bit of dust. So it looks like a switching problem. Well, that's a lot easier than the motor, so we can handle that. Famous last words. And look at that switch. It's just got a whole bunch of stacked uh, non-conductive pieces in there to make it up. Making USA too. So that switch like sort of works. I mean, it's pulling like uh, 5 ohms of resistance when you switch it on. Or I would have thought it would have been zero if it wasn't working at all. So we just bypassed the switch right now with the two black wires and we're going to plug it in and see what happens. Oh, 
Oh, that isn't good. Hmm. Must be a break in the wire. Well, after checking everything, I think there's your culprit. So we just chopped off the offending uh, breakage there. And we put it back together. I don't exactly like the uh, guillotine method of retaining the, the wire in here. But, uh, you know, I tried to reinforce it with some electrical tape to give this wire some more strength. And it wouldn't fit into that. So we took it off and just ran it stock. I guess we'll see how it holds up. I mean, if it made it 40 years, hopefully it'll make it another 30 at least. Alright, we're going hot. She's plugged in. Oh yeah. Surprisingly the belt is actually in pretty nice condition. Maybe some of those numbers on there were uh, when it was serviced. Well I'd say that looks like an oil port. You know back when they actually made things serviceable. I hope it is, because uh, it's getting some oil. So now since I oiled the back bearing on the motor, i got to see if there's a port that I can oil the front bearing on it. And uh, that's leading us to taking the whole front end off of it here. It's even got a light bulb. <laughs> if this thing had stock headlights, we got to replace that and get that functional. Okay, maybe not. It looks like it's a special... Uh, you know, 120 volt light bulb. It's a pretty thin filament in there. Oh man. That is nasty. I don't even want to know what kind of hotel filth is coming out of here. So nasty. After all that, no oil port, so that's as far as we're taking it apart. I don't know what happened, because I'm usually pretty anti-shine. But about a minute and a half with some rubbing compound and all that uh, cast aluminum come out looking pretty good. A little bit of WD, and even the height adjustment's working. Bam! There it is. Rehab vacuum. I hope the uh, reason that cord was broken was the reason why somebody got rid of it in the first place. About a you know, half hour's work and back in action. I mean the heck with some soft, you know, easy ringtone for your wake-up alarm. I want a, a guitar solo.